What was the weirdest black market in your school? Our middle school tried to start a reward program. It turned out to be a fail of epic proportion. Wolf Bucks, names after our mascot. They were mini sized dollars color coded by value. Green was $1. Red was $5. Blue was $10. And a gold wolf buck, only accessible to the principal and assistant principal $50. Now the school bought erasers. Pencil. Notebooks. You could only buy with wolf bucks one pencil. One wolf buck. First failure, it was easy to copy. So kids started mass copying them. OK school got smart and said only accepting wolf bucks with your name and have your teacher's signature second failure kept the same color so kids would earn one legitimately than the forgery started. Third failure, hyperinflation. During pep rallies, the principal started throwing golden wolf bucks. Eventually the school stopped resupplying the store. Everyone had hundreds slash thousands of worthless wolf bucks. So they struggled with counterfeiting and hyperinflation. Pro tip, during a war, start counterfeiting your enemy's currency to hyperinflate their market. One of my friends sold Starburst from his locker. 10 cents for two. If he liked you, you got two from the normal bag. If he didn't like you, you got two from the bag that only had yellows. I kind of like the yellow ones. I don't have any strong opinions on the tropical Starbursts or the other alternatives. But the original four flavors are all incredible. Edit, red, pink, yellow, and orange. I'm from the US. Indeed. Not really a black market, but there was a P-tape, VHS days, that used to do the rounds. There was a booking system and everything. You couldn't have it for more than two days. A booking system. Yeah. Man. It was well run. It's amazing what a group of focused horny teenagers can achieve. Yeah. Lazy kids these days with their inter tube SP will never know the pain. Now get off my lawn. Only guys of a certain age know what it is to try to rub one out to the mom from home improvement. Times were hard, but so was I. Our elementary school utilized ice cream tickets. You got one if it was your birthday or if you did something that a teacher decided was exemplary. People would pass them around asking for favors down the line. Some kid found the paper used to make the tickets, and Xeroxed multiple pages of the tickets. He became our kingpin, and ruled for a couple years. We had the same thing. It was called the chili cow machine. I remember it being like a frosty from Wenders. Our currency was wooden tokens with a picture of a cartoon cow on them. About an inch across, and one quarter inches thick. Well, I had a game at home. With identical tokens minus the cow pick. I cannot remember the name of the game. Well, it was kids who ran the machine during lunch. So for about a week my few friends and I got free chili cows until a teacher caught on. Spent three days and in school suspension. I had a friend that used to bring a bunch of coke cans from home and then sell them for a dollar at lunch. Cheaper than the vending machine prices and so it became like a little business. He eventually saved up enough for a lawn board. My son does this. I take him to the discount store to bulk buy drinks and sweets. He makes a nice little profit. You are a parent to be proud of. Sharpen sticks when we learned about cavemen we decided that it would have been a great idea to create our own prehistoric plan. So we smashed rocks and used them to sharpen tree branches. Some of us were particularly keen on sharpening that started to use walls as grindstones. They were able to sharpen about 6 sticks in half an hour and started exchanging them for berries during recess. Wholesome prehistoric commerce. This happened in Los Angeles in the mid 80s. Student bus passes had to be purchased by the 5th day of the month or you were stuck, having to pay daily. The date had passed, so I found a guy in my high school willing to trade another student's pass which he had stolen. I traded a tangerine and half a pack of cigarettes for a copy of Penthouse. Then I traded that issue with a pizza from the cafeteria for the bus pass. That sounds like the episode of Atlanta, where they trade a cell phone for a sword then sword for a dog then went to breed the dog, to make money off the pups. I need to start watching that show again. In early elementary school we had a market for mud. Different groups of kids would claim areas around the school as their mud pit, and put their brand of mud in Ziploc bags, to be traded with other groups for different bags of mud. We were the clay mud group, and I had about 3 kids in the muck scooping it into bags, or running to the water fountain, 
to get fresh water, to make more mud on dry days. I would be the one to go make the deals with the other groups. We traded Alert with the gravel mud group, because clay mud and cement mud are both good for building or some shit. Who knows. It made so much sense at the time. The principal and staff eventually stepped in to end it, because all the kids came back to class filthy every day and giant holes littered every field and playground. It made so much sense at the time. I love this. I remember things like this making so much sense as a kid. And as an adult it's just hard to remember why it made sense. But that feeling is still there, I think it's called imagination. But I've been paying taxes and a mortgage for too long to be sure. We used to put rocks on the railroad tracks, the same rocks that we used for rail bed ballast, so that trains would crush them. Then we would scoop up the dust and mix it with water. Because obviously that would make concrete. It didn't. But it seemed obvious to us that it should. I knew some kid who'd put quarters on the tracks, and then after the train mushed them, he'd sell them for more than zero dollars. 25. I can't recall what he sold them for but there was a clear profit. I did this with pennies a few times. Never sold them. Was only fascinated by what they ended up looking like afterwards. This wasn't a weird one, but a genius one for a tween. A girl set up a little business out of a box of stationery, writing forged letters from parents. She had all different paper, pens and pencils of every kind, and could write in convincingly accurate tone for the content of the notes depending on which kid they were for. She used different styles of handwriting, and different styles of punctuation and language too. She'd even fudge the spelling, if she thought the kid's parents weren't great at it. She grew up to be incredibly educated. I look back, and see that as her first moment of evil genius. It definitely suggested she would go on to brilliance one day and she did. Well. What did she end up doing for a living? Assistant to the manager. This one girl forged apology letters, if you brought her something one of your parents wrote. I never used her services myself. But we were, and still are, good friends. And I gotta say, she's talented as hell. I literally can't tell which one is mine, after she copied something I wrote. Including signature. It's baffling. She's the kind of person DiCaprio would approach, if he needs a chapa shifter in a dream heist. Or, she just straight up was a DiCaprio character from Catch Me If You Can. We did a weird assignment for a month, where we ran a society for an hour each day in our classroom. People had little shops they ran from their desks. There were elected positions. Laws you could be ticketed for breaking. Etc. It was all run on fake money, of course. I got elected chief of police, and handed out tickets for stuff like chewing gum in class, but a combination of laziness and not wanting everyone to hate me caused me to slack off, and I got fired after two weeks. So I opened a shop instead and sold stuff, including gum, which in hindsight makes me like a cop who became a drug dealer. The final week of this rolls around, and there's an announcement. At the end, all your money will be tallied up. Any debts or taxes you owe subtracted. And any kid who wound up with a positive mount gets a pizza party. Kids who are in the red have to write an assignment on how and why they screwed up. This electrifies the class. Missing out on a pizza party is a big damn deal when you're 10. And well under half the class is currently in the black. Tons of them had taken out big loans in the beginning to set up businesses. And had no way to repay them. Not me though. I'd been receiving a salary as a cop. And after being fired I just used the money I had accumulated to set up shop, and had no debts. Few in the class could say that. So I was sitting pretty. Soon I started receiving offers of real money on the playground for some of my fake money. You only needed to be $1 over 0 to win. So I could spare plenty. Made $40 in actual cash. I think I charged $5 for 100 fake dollars. And got 8 people to accept. So I was a corrupt cop who became a drug dealer who became a money launderer. And won. So I definitely learned a lot about how society works. Edit. Since everyone keeps asking if this foreshadowed my future career. I must disappointingly admit that I'm just a software dev now. I mean. As far as you and Uncle Sam know. I'm a software dev. Bottle caps I still don't get it. But back in primary school. They were collecting bottle caps for some kind of charity. Google it. It's still ongoing around the world. So what happened was everything was going well. 
the teacher got everyone excited about it, and kids were collecting it in mass. Kids would go around raiding for it. From the trash. From their school lunches. From their homes even. A teacher got a call from a concerned parent, because her kid hijacked all the bottle caps from their kitchen. So that's stage 1 of the weirdness. It's what happened afterwards. Stage 2. Kids started trading with these plastic bottle caps. We would trade pens. Homework and even Pokemon cards for bottle caps. Worthless bottle caps. There wasn't even a price for whoever could collect the most caps. It just became a currency out of nowhere. Let's talk about stage 3 of the madness. Theft. There was no bank of bot caps at our school. There was the donation box and there were your cubbies. Those who didn't want to lug their stash back home every day left it in their cubbies and some kid decided to steal people's caps and from the donation box. The great theft of class 3b. But it was probably for the best because overpass the madness subsided. The teacher ended the bottle cap donation. She was sick of the bugs that were gathering and licking up the dried up sugar juices from the caps anyway, but mostly horrified at how her little charity drive devolved into a socio-economical experiment. Just like that. The bottle cap market crashed. Preparing for nuclear war. Huh. Mayo the whole time I was thinking these kids played way too much Fallout. In year 10th I was able to gain access a teacher's account on my school tablet which allowed me to get internet access. I then realized I could open a hotspot which allowed other students to have internet access on their tablets. We weren't allowed to have cell phones. I decided to charge $10 a week for each student that wanted to subscribe for internet access which I was distributing. I started receiving requests from students, not in the radius of the hotspot. Thus I figured out a way for users to SSH connect to my school tablet and use it to gain internet access. It was a mess and the network became too slow, but I was still getting paid regardless. Best of all, the it guy knew what I was doing but he wasn't able to stop it since the school only employed one guy to handle everything thus. He was too busy to do anything about it. We would figure out and pass around teachers passwords for the online grading login where you can also message parents and shit. It blew up big time. They had to change everyone's password and track down the biggest offenders. Harry Potter books I went to a religious school where books that had magic or fantasy was banned. Parents of these kids were just as religious so kids couldn't get them from their parents. Mom didn't care and she let me buy a few for some friends and then more kids started requesting them. Charged double for what they were worth and the kids were more than happy to pay. Most popular requests were Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings and Cirque du Freak series. Edit also made money making customized covers for the books, so it looked like they were reading something else. Edit I should probably mention that this was a Muslim school. Not all heroes wear capes. Drawings. It started out as a joke. Some kids make beautiful drawings and trade them for other drawings. At one point we decided to give them a value. If a drawing was really pretty, let's say 8 tenths, we would number it with 8, and you could trade it for 2 fours apostrophe. There were kids that would not draw, but were chosen to write these drawings. At one point kids would trade snacks for beautiful drawings. This started in my class, and in a couple of days the whole school was doing this. My drawings were okay, but not great, and sadly I never got snacks to bring to school. So I had nothing to trade. So I decided to recruit other kids that were really good and would be their manager so they had more time to draw. I had siblings and other grades. So I would contact them. So trade these in their class so there was more ground to collect snacks from. I also bargained with the kids that would be ratings the drawings. Promising them a share of the snacks. My clients would share their snacks with me as payment for my services. I still remember those stupid horse flower drawings. Horse girls went nuts over these and would give anything for them. In high school I was the only kid in my year that knew how to download music to your phone. I would make a list of songs people want and would transfer these trough bluetooth. I would charge one cookie for one song. In high school I was the only kid in my year that knew how to download music to your phone. I could imagine one person figuring it out and either create competition or completely bring down the market. Noodle seasoning packets. Did you go to school at jail? I heard loud Diamond Phillips was the ramen king. Beef baby. 
I think I was 16 when this happened, but basically a bunch of guys bag and printing paper that looked like contracts with the top saying soul contract. They'd come up to some of the younger students and get them to sign the document to sell their soul for eternity and would pay then 2 to 3 dollars, converting to USD. We had a good laugh when some of the students became worried they actually sold their soul. Lmao kids are so delightfully strange. Salt my school canteen doesn't have any salt with chips or fries to Americans and people used to sell salt packets. The most expensive offer I could find was 50 pence for a packet or 1 pound for 3. Salt. Isn't there a tax for that? Diddle paper. It's colored paper with a mouse drawn on it. But everyone collected them. No matter how old. And there were hundreds of different artworks. People had folders with protective covers, and depending on the motive and rarity you wanted to trade, you could get 3 to 4 other motives in exchange. It was willed. I just googled it, and there are still collectors buying and selling them on the internet. I organized the black market. My school banned Pokemon cards. So I made a new game with paper cards. I was drawing pretty well. So I folded and paper in 9. It made pieces approximately the size of a Pokemon Vard. And created a whole new game out of this. Sold boosters for 10 cents. Spend all my afternoons drawing cards for the school. Teachers eventually heard of it and couldn't ban it because it was still officially still me distributing drawings. And then I started to do replicas of Pokemon cards. Like people had to show me the proof after school that they owned the card. I made a replica. And then the whole Pokemon card trading continued with paper replicas. Then after school people made the real exchanges, based on what replicas they exchanged during school. So you basically made a Pokemon backed paper currency? Laughed way too hard. A teacher at my high school that I refused to rat on would take money from students and buy them lottery tickets slash scratch offs in exchange for a cut of any price $50 and up. I think the dude legit made a few thousand dollars off of this just during my senior year. And it made the students love him. Mountain Dew and Pepsi had a contest where college names were printed on the inside of the bottle caps. If that school won the NCAA March Madness tournament, you could send it in for the jersey of your choice from any school. Suddenly, a black market for caps with blue chip schools was born. I remember selling a Duke cap for $10, then turning around and buying 10 drinks from the vending machine. It wasn't weird, but I sold protection when kids wanted to ditch. When the school announced openings in the attendance office, I had a half dozen of my friends rush over and sign up immediately. By the end of the day, we owned it. I charged $10 to $20 to ignore each truancy. Each morning, if we had clients, I'd hand a list and half of the cash to whomever was working that day. Word got around fast, but we were never caught. Your school had students keep track of other students' attendance? How did they get away with that? When school attendance slash truancy is a legal matter, they were just doing the data entry from forms the teachers would turn in. It was pretty manual back then. Spicy sweet chili Doritos. This one kid would buy every single bag out of the vending machines and sell them for like double the cost. That kid's either going to Shark Tank or to prison for fraud. Actually the last I heard, he is in prison. But it's for possession of marijuana with intent to sell the mayo. A man of business I see. I was a businessman. Doing business. Not really black market but kinda. It was in the 90s and most people had a computer, but internet was still very slow when you had it. I was a teen and had managed to put my hand on a CD-ROM with 3P videos on it. The kind of CD-ROM that was offered with the magazine you could find on the highest shelf of the newspaper stand. I was starting to know all three videos by heart, so I decided to lend it to a friend, and then I kinda forgot about it. A few days later I noticed during the class that another unrelated person was lending my video to yet another guy. My CRM was having a life of its own, moving from hand to hand, providing happiness along its way. I was very proud. I can finally answer one. I used to sell bags of sugar and Kool-Aid, like bootleg like M sticks. Also sold red hot toothpicks I made from cinnamon oil. When I got into high school, my family was one of the first to get a computer. I made a killing from printing out fake report cards. I was quite the entrepreneurial little shit. Well, it was glue to get high on, but it has a weird story behind it. 
the school district gives out a mandatory anonymous quiz-like thing every other year. Basically, it asks you how safe you feel on campus, how close you are with the teachers, do you need help with schoolwork, the standard stuff to say they care when really they are only using it to slip in a question or two that they really want to know the answer of, but it's under the guise that they want to know about everything. Anyway. One of the sections they just added that year was about drugs, there had been reports to them of a drug problem in our school, and into others. So they asked the typical have you ever felt peer pressured into drinking beer, wine, or any alcohol type things. And one of the questions was, have you ever felt the desire to inhale, glow in order to feel high, or something to that effect. Everyone was so surprised at that question. And immediately after the test thing was over we had our lunch break. So what do you know everyone's trying to get their hands on the school's glue supply to see if it actually worked. And by the time our next period started, I think it's safe to say that a third of the school was high. So yeah. Now there's a glue black market at that school. You can just about always find them in front of the school office too. Which I think is just asking for trouble but hey. Nothing bad has happened to the kids who are doing it so. I wonder if test scores have steadily gone down. And there's some office admin wondering why. And also why they can never find glue. Fake kids. Was that a deep web school lol. Lol now basically a couple of us knew a guy who would make it. They charge like $10 to make it. My friend and I changed other people $20 to make a profit. We were the only ones who knew this person made them in our school. How long ago was this? My buddy in the early 2010s was selling them for $80. Yeah. These are the cheapest fakes I've ever heard of. Graduated high school in the mid-zeros. They were 84 friends hundo 4 randoms.